Good afternoon, everyone. Now, we just brought you a review of the Q7 last week. And while that's an excellent all-round vehicle, it's simply too modest and too practical to serve as Audi's flagship SUV. Flagships require a certain lustful allure that draws you in, which is why Audi has created the all-new Q8. And it's an absolute showstopper. Of course, we do want to give a big thanks to Audi of Lexington for giving us access to this fully loaded Q8. And if you're in the market for any new Audi, be sure to stop by their dealership or visit their website, which we provided a link to in the video description. So with all that said, let's see if the Q8 out desires all its rivals. So getting started here with the exterior styling. If you thought the Q8 was merely a souped up Q7, then you're in for a surprise. The 8 actually sets the stage for all future Q models, with a substantially more aggressive look. Now our Q8 comes with the special year 1 package that gives you the black optic grille and reshaped body panels in the front. So if you go for black, you get this incredibly sinister front design, or you could choose another color and get this kind of mask effect. It is also worth noting that here in the States, the standard grille is body colored as opposed to the silver ones that you may have seen on the European spec models. Now turning over to your headlights, they also represent a new direction for Audi being in two distinct pieces. All models come with LED lights, however we have these special matrix lights that come on the Prestige. Now several of the special functions are disabled in the US until regulations change, but they do still look extremely slick. Around at the side is where you can start to see the coupe inspiration, although the roofline doesn't slope quite as aggressively as rivals like the X6. As far as the size, it's only about 3 inches shorter than a Q7, even though to my eyes it looks a lot closer to a Q5. And I also want to mention that we have the air suspension, which can adjust the ground clearance all the way to 10 inches in the off-road setting. Heading around back, again it looks extremely aggressive, and it's got a wide stance that reminds me a lot of the Lamborghini Urus, which by the way this is somewhat related to. Just like the headlights, the taillights are a new design for Audi, featuring a continuous light bar that connects them and allows them to do cool tricks like the animation when you get inside the vehicle. Otherwise, the lights have a cool 3D shape, dynamic turn signals, and if you go for a lighter color, they are connected by a black panel that harkens back to the Audi Quattro. Down at the bottom, you've got the one design misstep, which are fake exhaust pipes. But overall, they do little to hinder the really impressive design. This is a seriously eye-catching crossover, and judging by the number of people that stop by to take pictures of it, the general public also agrees with me. To go along with the general styling, we have some of the best looking wheels I've ever seen on an SUV. They are 22s that come in the year 1 package, but there are several other 21 and 20 inch designs available. That year one package also gives us the red brake calipers. Checking out the mirrors, they are heated and power folding on all trims, but you will need to get at least the premium plus for auto dimming and blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. As far as your other safety systems, they mirror the Q7, so all models come with forward emergency braking, but you'll have to spring for a prestige to get the driver's assist package, and that includes lane keeping assist, rear emergency braking, auto high beam headlights, and adaptive cruise control with traffic jam assist. And lastly, here on the outside, you have a 22.5 gallon fuel tank. That is good for 428 miles of range on premium unleaded fuel. Anyways, that's it for the stylish exterior, so now let's move on to the high-tech cabin. Of course, since this is a flagship model, obviously you do have smart entry. You've got a, a new key fob design for Audi, uh, just a thinner design with metal trim on the bottom. 
And of course, to get in, all you have to do is grab the handle. And you will also notice that we've got frameless glass as well. All right, so looking inside the 2019 Q8, it has a real stealthy appearance, just like the outside here on the interior, but also a very luxurious appearance as well. This, of course, is the fully blacked out option, but as you'd imagine, there are several other choices, including Sayega Beige, Okapi Brown, and Pando Gray. Now, this model also has the luxury package, and that's got the choice between black and Sayega Beige only, and this is a special Valcona leather. And finally, all models get the choice between three trims, natural eucalyptus, high gloss gray oak, or this fine gray ash oak. Now turning to your door trim, it is of course very luxurious. So you've got leather all through the armrest and Alcantara all through the middle. And then you also have a really nice wood trim as well as an aluminum door handle. So all models do have two person memory seating. And of course, all four windows are fully automatic. Now turning to your seat, most models come with an eight way power seat. However, here on this model with the luxury package, we've got several more ways of adjustment, I'm not sure exactly how many, as well as the massaging function. And then like I already mentioned, the luxury model gives you this really, really supple Valcona leather. It is some of the finest I've ever felt in a vehicle, and uh, it looks very nice as well. Now this of course is Audi's new interior design language, so it doesn't look anything like the Q7 we reviewed earlier in the week. The materials are also a step up from the Q7, especially here with the luxury package. So we've got full leather across the entire upper dash, and then moving down, you've got piano black trim, as well as some more of this real open port wood. And then down here in the middle, you've got a layer of wood, aluminum, as well as leather down here as well and everything just fits together in that way that you always expect Audis to. And of course you just push the button to start. So we've got a new little tone that you're just now hearing and you also see that we've got the two screened Audi MMI touch response system, which is of course new. And this top screen is 10.1 inches and then you have a secondary 8.6 inch display. But we'll go into all of this a little later. Of course to go along with that, you do have your standard Audi virtual cockpit. It is 12.3 inches. And on this model, you've got version 2.0. Now, it's not a whole lot different from version 1.0, um, but the graphics and animations just load a little bit faster. Everything's a little bit smoother, just better processing all around. And if we click the headlights off here, we don't have the Google Maps activated right now, but of course, you do have your Google Earth Maps here as well as in the main display. Additionally, if you opt for the prestige trim, you will also find a head-up display. Now right now all it has is just the speed, but of course you can uh, adjust it to show different types of information like navigation, audio, traffic signs, etc. Now coming back to your steering, it is electric power assisted and fed through this nice thin rimmed leather wrap steering wheel. As far as your buttons, these are concerning your virtual cockpit. And then on this side, you've got your other controls like your phone, audio, and voice commands. We do have rain sensing wipers as well as paddle shifters. And then the steering wheel itself is power adjusting on all models, though you have to get the cold weather package to get heating. And then we also have adaptive cruise control with uh, your full suite uh, driver assistance coming standard on the prestige trim. I will also mention over here, 
your headlight controls are touch sensitive, so you can just basically click and scroll through your different headlight controls there. All right, so going into storage, you really don't give up much from the Q7. So turning over here to the center console, first of all, it does adjust, so it kind of basically goes down and then up and slides up. Then you can pull it up. And you've got a decent amount of storage here. This main part is for your wireless phone charger that comes on the Premium Plus and Prestige. Or if you don't have a compatible device, you've still got your two USB ports right there. of that you've got a little space right there as well as two cup holders and a 12 volt outlet now just like all recent Audis you do have an electronic shifter which is flat on top so it allows for you to use the MMI display it's really easy to use all you have to do is pull back for drive then you can bump over to the right to shift manually here or obviously more likely the better way is to use the paddle shifters And then for reverse, you basically just move it up two notches. Now once you get into reverse, you will see the 360 degree camera system boot up. Now this is a really neat system for a couple reasons. For one here in your traditional view, the camera actually bends with the active trajectory. So that's really neat and I've never seen that on any car before. And then in addition, you'll notice this button labeled 3D. Now when you click that, this brings you into a 3D view of your vehicle, and you can basically just pan around the entire thing. As you can see, there's a truck driving by, and you've got this full representation here all around you. So if there's any place you can't see, you can just pan around to it and get a good view of it. So this is super, super slick. And then additionally, you do have an electronic parking brake as well. And then moving on up to your next row of buttons, this one just manually launches your 360 camera. And then this one goes through your safety systems and it allows you to go through three preset modes. All right, now let's go ahead and sample the audio system. In this particular model, we have the Bang & Olsen 3D sound system. However, you can also get a optional uh, advanced 360 degree sound system as well. as you can tell this is a really nice sounding sound system and then up above that you will notice your climate controls now these are they change depending on the trim so on the premium you have three zone climate control and then on the other models you have four zone climate control however you don't get the full digital buttons until you get to the prestige trim now what's neat about this system that you may not expect is that you've got this force touch kind of like an iPhone so you still have the physical feeling of a button even though this is a display so as you can see you can drag over these things but nothing registers it just lights up you actually have to press for the action to occur and that makes it a lot easier to handle while driving because your hand may you know move around and accidentally touch something you don't want to and this makes it super easy to get used to also within the screen, you do have other controls like for your three-stage heated seats, which are standard, and your three-stage ventilated seats. You can also press this button here to get some additional functions like your heated steering wheel. And then up here, you've got your auto start-stop defeat, your hill descent control, your traction control. This button is your preset for your home as well as your home link garage door opener and screen off button. And then down here at the very bottom, you've got your buttons for your drive modes. There are a ton of different drive modes, uh, including a all road, off road, dynamic, and an individual. And those things do have an impact on your air suspension. 
But anyways, that pretty much brings us up to the main MMI display. So let's go ahead and take a look at the brand new MMI touch response. So like I just said, this is an all new system for Audi and it's going to be rolling out to most of their future vehicles starting with the A8 and going to the A6, A7, Q8, etc. Now this is of course totally unique because previously they had no touch screen at all and now you've got two touch displays to work between. They've uh, really tried to make this tablet like so you've got your home screen and basically you have apps that go across and you can hold down on these and reconfigure the order to whatever you desire. And then on the side, you've got shortcut buttons and these always stay here no matter what part of the system that you're in. So we'll start off in the media. We're currently connected to Bluetooth and you can play and pause music straight from here. Hopping into phone next, you've got all of your contacts which automatically sync over. You can just scroll through them. And then you can also have your traditional number pad as well. Now you will notice that some of the things you do up here involve the bottom display. So when you go to dial a number, a keypad comes up here so you can rest your arm on the shifter and easily type your number right there. Next up we've got navigation. Now, of course, you do have your Google Earth Maps and you can control the tilt. So you have 3D view and this is as detailed as it is in any other Audi product. Now to actually set the destination, you just hit the search button. And when you do, you'll notice that you drop down a full keyboard down here so you can easily type whatever you're looking for. Or even cooler, you hit the hand button and you go into a handwriting mode. So basically you can just go across here and write the entire address that you want. So we can say 3100. 3100. Zero, zero. And as you see you can just write I -N -G. the entire thing. This is what I'm looking for. And you can even write the letters one on top of another like for instance, see I was running out of space for the long word Hemingway, so you can write H. And that looks like a bunch of scribbles, -M -M but the system knows what that is because I had to lift my hand in between the letters. Now I'm not going to go through every single feature, but the one really neat thing left to talk about is the Apple CarPlay, but it's not just regular Apple CarPlay, this is wireless Apple CarPlay. So as you can see, here's our iPhone, totally unconnected from anything, and we do have access to the full Apple CarPlay system. It works just the same as it does on any other model. The only thing different here is that there's no haptic feedback when you're inside of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which by the way, Android Auto works with your USB port. Well, that pretty much hits the highlights of the new MMI touch response system. However, we will have a dedicated tech help video that really digs into the details coming soon. Now moving on up, of course, all models do have a frameless auto dimming mirror. And you will also find this really large panoramic moonroof standard on all trims. As you can see, it goes almost all the way back. And then of course the front panel does open as well. And you do have a windscreen. We'll also mention that the headliner is Alcantara with the luxury package and it feels really, really nice. But overall, Audi has created an absolutely phenomenal space here in the Q8. This cabin is so luxurious and so high tech Yet yeah, all the technology is approachable, it's not super complicated and everything makes sense right off the bat. I think this is a cabin that everybody's going to be happy with. Now the door handle is actually electronic so you just pull it a little bit and it does open up. But anyways, now I'll go ahead and hand it off to Mason to check out all the rear areas.
Now as far as rear space is concerned in the all new 2019 Q8, you're actually gonna find plenty of it. That's because it's over five inches larger than the BMW X6 at 40.2 inches of legroom and 38 inches of headroom. Now the seats themselves are a beautiful Valcona leather design on this luxury model and they are extremely comfortable. Now heading over to the door trim, it is of course made of nice materials as well. So you do have a leather armrest, which is also included in that luxury package, as well as Alcantara above it, and beautiful wood trim. Now since it's so dark outside, you can also see the LED uh, ambient lighting, which is blue right now. And you will also have a nice metal door handle to control the electronic uh, mechanism. And down here, of course, you do have power windows, and you do also have a power sunshade. All right, so let's go ahead and get inside. All right, so in the center area, we do have plenty of controls on this fully loaded model. All Q8s will get these rear air vents in the back, and they will also get their option to adjust the temperature independent from the front. However, on the Premium Plus and Prestige models, it is four zone climate, so each rear passenger gets to adjust their temperature. Now the adjustment itself is pretty easy and it's just like what it's in the front. So it's electronic so you can just slide your finger up for a higher temperature and slide your finger down for a lower temperature. And the fan speed can be adjusted in the same way. Now you will also notice that we do have three stage heated rear seats in the back and that is included in the cold weather package. Down below that you will see that we have an illuminated 12 volt outlet as well as two USB ports which is a really nice touch since most Audis do not have that. Now for your center armrest, you do have a nice leather wrapped one. You do have some pop out cup holders up here. And up top we do have some LED lighting as well as this beautiful Alcantara headliner that is included in the luxury package. We also have this panoramic moonroof which really helps to air up the cabin as well as an assist grip and coat hook. Now behind Drew's position, as you can tell, there is plenty of space. So I have probably about six to eight inches of leg room behind Drew's position, and Audi was nice enough to include knee, cu knee cutouts. My feet can also slide up under the seat very easily, and it's the same story over here with the seat slided all the way back. So you can definitely tell that this is a lot bigger than most rivals. So overall, I am extremely impressed with this all-new Q8's rear seat. It balances extreme sportiness and luxury to a T, so all your family members will be happy. Now to fold down the seat back, just grab this little lever and we'll fold it down and it does fold nice and flat. Now heading around to the tailgate, it is hands-free power on all Q8s. So just find the button under the lid or wave your foot under the bumper. All right, so in the cargo area of the all new Q8, you're once again gonna find a larger amount of space than most of the rivals. You'll find 29 cubic feet with the rear seats in place, expanding to 68 cubic feet with them folded. Like I said, that does place it as larger than most of the rivals. However, that number is a little bit less than the Q7. Of course, it is finished very nicely back here with a nice cargo cover, a very nice carpeting, very premium material, as well as a spare tire underneath the floor and a metal scuff plate. Additionally, it's also worth noting that Audi does give you buttons to raise and lower the rear air suspension for easier loading. Passenger seat is, of course, a beautiful design as well. 
and we do have silver buttons to adjust the 12-way power adjusting seats on this prestige model. It's also worth noting that we do have two-person memory seats on the passenger side, which is an extremely luxurious touch. So of course materials are beautiful in front of the passenger. You have a fully leather dashboard on this luxury package model, as well as a nice rear air vent, piano black trim, and some more beautiful open port wood. Down below that, we do have a nicely dampened glove box that is very felt lined, and it's actually very good sized as well. It's also worth noting that we do have a CD DVD player in here, as well as LED lighting. Up top, we do have a nice sun visor. It does have LED lighting, nice mirror, and you can also detach it and extend it. Well guys, that pretty much sums up all I have to cover up here in the Q8. So now let's go ahead and look at the powertrain and do a quick test drive. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain. Now this model has got Audi's new 3 liter turbo V6 that makes 335 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. And that is the same as in the new A6, A7, and A8, but not the same as in the Q7, which has an older supercharged V6. Compared to rivals, that is less power than your GLE Coupe, but more than your base X6. And then Audi has not announced if there'll be an optional V8, but I'd anticipate there probably will be an SQ8. Now there are some other components to the powertrain, and that's your 48-volt mild hybrid system. And basically, it doesn't assist the driving, it's really mostly just used for an advanced auto start system that can turn off in a lot more situations and save a lot more fuel. It does power your electronics, and then your braking recharges the battery. As far as your transmission, all models have an 8-speed automatic, and you're paired with full-time Quattro all-wheel drive. 0-60 to 60 is 5.6 seconds. And then lastly, you've got your fuel economy ratings of 17 city, 22 highway, 19 combined. That's pretty much it, so let's go ahead and take it on a quick spin. So getting up to 30 miles an hour right there, uh, it definitely uh, can get up to speed quickly. Yes, it's very. It's plenty of power. Um, those aren't huge numbers, actually, given the, you know, that it is an SUV. But I don't think you'll be wanting for power. It feels really good. It also sounds very good as well. Yeah, it does have a nice throaty sound. And uh, this does have an air suspension. Um, so we're going over some speed bumps. Yeah, you can definitely tell. Really absorbs them nicely. So you kind of get the best of both both worlds with the air suspension. It rides really compliant while still having its really button-down feel. Um, it does, you know, it just feels really sporty. And we can try it out dynamic mode and see uh, if that changes our characteristics any. It definitely makes your throttle more responsive. And Seems like it almost shifts gears even yeah. more than it used to. And it does probably beef up that exhaust note as well.
Now we'll talk about the steering. Um, it is lightweight, uh, so it's not super communi communicative. However, uh, it does feel nice still, especially when you're in the dynamic mode. It's uh, it's very responsive, really quick. So yeah, just riding along here in the parking lot, um, you can definitely tell that the QA is still a very luxurious SUV. It's by no means a super sporty SUV that you're going to sacrifice ride quality and stuff like that in. We actually drove the Q7 less than a week ago, and the difference between the two is it's really not that much. However, this car, you can tell it has a little bit more of a sporty personality, and that shines through in the exhaust note and in the acceleration, but it doesn't really sacrifice the ride quality as well. Right, and it's important to remember that this shares a foundation with really sporty vehicles like the Porsche Cayenne, the uh, Lamborghini Urus, uh, you know, so these are vehicles that are very sporty and you can definitely feel this, These ha it has really good bones and like the Q7, it's super impressive that you've got this type of performance while um, still having so much comfort and so much luxury. So that was your auto start stop. Um, like I said, this is advanced auto start stop. Turns off more frequently um, than a normal system, and it is very smooth. I don't imagine you'll want to turn it off, but if you do, you can always turn it off with that dedicated button. But uh, all in all, I mean, I'm tremendously impressed. It is. Really, it's just, it's a sporty SUV through and through. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed watching the first in-depth look at the all-new 2019 Audi Q8 Prestige. Stay watching for a quick look at the pricing, and don't forget to those like and subscribe buttons below. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.